now, live from the ISW studios in beautiful Indian Atlantic, Florida, it's Livio Candy's Music All-Stars, brought to you by today's fine sponsors. GS Teaser. Zen 4.0. Marion Music and Open Mics. And now, here's your host, Steve Murray. And you're up. How you doing, everybody out there? How's it going? This is a new show uh, we're just starting today. Um, it's called Livio's Candies, All Stars, and uh, this is my first guest, Patrick McMichael. He builds custom guitars. Thank you, we mother. have a couple of them behind us. This beautiful polka dotted one I played for a little while before. A really great guitar. Really easy playing, and uh, this purple psychedelic one is a super heavy metal plus a clean guitar, too. It feels really nice. Great guitar builder. Thank you. So Thank how you, my been? friend. <laughs> how you been? How you been doing? Doing good, doing good. Yeah. Great weekend, still getting my voice back for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What'd you do, go out playing this weekend? Yeah, I went out, just... jammed around with a lot of people, and yeah. got to see some good bands, some local bands. That's what I do. I go out and jam at the open mics and uh, try to meet all the people around here and um, see what they're doing and I know what I'm doing. And absolutely. Absolutely. we got to get out and meet all the good people. So when did you uh, get into building guitars? Uh, I started building guitars when I was a kid. Oh, yeah? Yeah, when I was a kid I was putting them together and taking them apart and I actually started playing drums. And, uh, I was a drummer first too. Yeah, I took drum <laughs> lessons and everything, and and started putting guitars together, and just started and found out that that was my love, and yeah. and found out I couldn't sit behind a drum set. I had to get up and move around. Yeah, I was the same way. I couldn't sit behind the yeah. drums all night. You know, I had to be out. Exactly. In the front. <laughs> you have a wireless going, and you can walk around and see the crowd and everything. Yep, that's have my a, new thing too. I got a wireless. I've been walking around into the crowd and yeah, have a great time with yeah. it. You know. So we've been playing at a lot of these uh, local bars around here, um, Blues Blues down the street, and Blues is um, great, great place to play on open mics and regular gigs. They have great bands there and. Um, we're checking out some of the other bars, uh, Winfield's. I played there a few times. That's right down the street, and that's really good. Yeah, Winfield's is a nice place. I yeah, like that it's place. a nice little stage. has good acoustics to listen. Absolutely. And, um, you know, there's a few out in Coco where I live, uh, H&D Roadhouse and Dog and Bone Pub. Yeah. That has a really nice acoustics. We sound really good there. I love that place. And that's where I usually go for places that sound good. Right, yeah. You know, exactly. where I can get into it. And when I'm into it, everybody else is into it. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Steagles was one I visited this weekend. That oh, was, yeah. That was nice. Oh, yeah. That was really good. I played there one time with uh, the Bad Clowns. Right. Yeah, and we nice. did a little Led Zeppelin show. Yeah. Had my Les Paul there with me. I, Very cool. I love playing the Les Paul. It's just now the way the music is, it seems like the Strat can do everything. Right, yeah. And yeah. so I kind of put down the Les Paul a little bit, but, you know, I'm always looking for a song. Well, I can use the Les Paul, you know. Right, like <laughs> absolutely. I want a whole set with Les Paul. Yeah, well, you know what Rory Gallagher said with the Strat is he could play rhythm and lead. Yeah. So he, could, he could get two paychecks. <laughs> Instead of Good one. Idea. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. That's how he talked his parents into buying that. He <laughs> said, great. And Jimi Hendrix had one, so we all know that. Absolutely. And we, Absolutely. He's my love. One thing I like to do with the strats is do the reverse headstock. Yeah, that's right. And really that's, nice. always, that's always a signature of mine, and that's always me thinking of Jimmy. Yep. 
And what about these pickups? Uh, those are lace alumitone pickups. They're kind of a new concept. Uh, they don't use the whole coil and big giant magnets. So yeah. it actually lightens up the guitar a lot. You take about a half a pound off of a guitar wow. with those pickups. And they're super, super clean and super high output. Wow. So you can really so play So you get like anything. a strat sound when you back off on the volume. And then when you go all the way up... You You're in a Les Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's it's uh -huh. a real versatile guitar. You know, very versatile pickups. I love them. It looks really great. I mean, yeah. I like the polka dots on it. Yeah, everybody usually asks me about those pickups because they look so different. So and then great. what kind of bridge did you put in here? That's a Wilkinson bridge. I like it because it's more comfortable. It's round. I see that. It, it built a little part around here to... Kind yeah, of put they, your palm on. Like, yeah, they kind of rolled the steel so it doesn't tear the side of your, your guitar, side, side of your <laughs> hand <laughs> up, you know, all the time. I know, I got the Stratocaster. It does get to me once in a while. Now, this here, this is a push-pull. I mean, you can pull this right out of here. Yes, yes. So You, you don't, don't have, have to, to unscrew it. Yeah, you don't have to unscrew yeah. it so it doesn't strip out. It strips out and it always goes past. Yeah, it's a pain uh -oh. in the butt. There you go. All right. Had to do some. Play is great. Really good action. And I can hear it really good uh, out of the microphone here. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Oh, this is a great guitar. Yeah, and I, I get the next from a custom maker in Canada, so they're all... Canadian hard maple. With the rosewood stripe the, down the back. Absolutely. Which is the best, right best the maple on the planet. You had a hard rock maple from Canada. Absolutely. Yeah. Stay stay in tune. You can whammy bar until the cows come home and it stays in tune. And yeah, the feel is unbelievable on this guitar. Thank you. That's one of my specialties is getting that action nice and tight and getting all the strings to be able to ring out. And bending, you know, I do a lot of changing the radiuses on the frets and everything so you can bend them from one end to the other. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, there's my bleeding shamrock at the top. Love you, that. <laughs> Thank you, crowd. <laughs> Absolutely. And, so, I ha and I have some steady suppliers that I deal with and uh, yeah, that you know, make me different things. This one, this one's called the Psychedelic. I don't, made for a friend of mine, Matt Melichek. Really nice, cool looking guitar. Nice guitar. Uh, I love same, maple necks. You know, same maple neck. They just did the inlay to match the body. And did an ebony, ebony uh, binding all the way around the headstock. Wow. I don't know if they can pick up the skull tuners. Can you, can you hold it straight up? Mm hmm. It has skull tuners. Yeah. And that is a cool headstock. Yeah, that's unique. I wanted it to be kind of independent for this, this uh, friend of mine. And uh, left it blank so he can put his own logo on it if he wants to put his name on it. Oh, yeah. That's we've a great talked idea. about that. So we've talked about taking it and uh, putting an inlay up top, maybe with some, some green abalone. And Beautiful this, guitar. This, yeah, this company is a couple of friends of mine from, from Hong Kong. And they made some skull tuners. Great company. Well, I know you would be building me a guitar very soon. Well, very this soon. one here, I'm going to probably use live Absolutely. when we play live next week. I want to show everybody what this guitar sounds like. That's right. Through an amp. Yeah. My rig. So I'm going to do. I like your rig, too. Your yeah, rig rocks. I like that. Some cool sound I found, and I never left it. That's right. You know, That's I'm just right. going to stay with it. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah, and for, for this one, the... Uh, you know, the owner wanted a, a custom really hot guitar. He does a lot of tapping. So you needed really hot output pickups. So I put him a 1975 Super Distortion wow. in the bridge, you know, nice. which is kind of hard to find. 
Yeah, and 75. Yeah. They're the hottest pickup on the planet and a hot rail in the front. And they I've marry, used those before. They, they're a great sounding pickup. Yeah, they marry together really well. Put a push pull, I mean, a you know, mini switch in so you can still split this coil and get a nice strat sound out of it. Great. So it's a good versatile guitar as well. And of course, How I, you like that, people. Yeah, of course, <laughs> route it out the back so you can bend up. Pull up, for, all right. For three days. Yeah. You know? It was, it was a really nice guitar. I liked, it, liked the way it came out. Beautiful. I have, a, I have a custom paint guy that I'm working with that does all different kinds of paint jobs. And yeah. We have candy colors, and we're getting ready to do a uh, chameleon. You see the chameleon cars? Yeah, that right change now? colors as they go down the street. Yes. Yeah. We're going to do a chameleon next. Maybe and, that'll be mine. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to that's gonna be really, really nice. So it's a it's been a love of mine forever, and uh, now I get the opportunity to do it full time. Yeah. So. And now fantastic. people around the world will see your guitars. Yes, that That's is going to be, be great. great. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be really great. And they'll hear them when I'm playing, and you, of course you could come up and play with us too. Sure. Yeah, you know sure. this is going to be like a jam night here on um, once a month. He's going to have. Uh, open mic here and it's going to be like one full band playing that's going live to be fantastic. for the world that is going to be fantastic and fantastic for our area because we do have so many good musicians around yes. here and such a wide variety of all styles music. of music i know you got from heavy metal down to reggae yeah the motown motown type of music i loved that as a kid and i remember it driving around in my mother's car on the am radio was, oh yeah yeah you know <laughs> so we're gonna have uh, what gt express on oh yeah you know and they're a fantastic band yeah i know who classic they are. motown band they, those those people they rock. played at uh the crew jam thing yeah. uh, about a month ago and they impressed me they were so good with that 60s type of yeah. Motown music yeah and you don't get to hear it much at a club anymore so it's, it's no. refreshing yes very yes. refreshing to get out and see something like that yeah so we'll be getting back to you soon um, we'll be right back after this don't go anywhere Get jealous of her hair. This is bullshit. Look at this hair on this guy. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> Alright, here we go. This is Bon Jovi tune. It's called Wanted. Dead or alive. I got Mr. Dave Percy on my back up over here.
And welcome back to our show, Olivia Candy's Music All Stars from the ISWTV studios in beautiful Indy Atlantic, Florida. Today's show is brought to you by our sponsors. GS Teaser. Zen 4.0. Marion Music. Open Mics. And the good folks at ISWTV Studio. And now, here's your host. Live and in person. Guitar Steve. Right. Hey, Steve, you're up. Yeah, that yeah. was really good. Was uh, how you doing, everybody? You're back. We're Glad back. you're back. So you saw one of my videos of uh, my band GS Teaser, and uh, that in-between song is one of my original songs called uh, Guitar Mountain that I played all the instruments on with my Les Paul. And we're back with Patrick McMichael here. That Thank you, good. my friend. So how, what time, about how old were you when you switched from drums to uh, guitar? I was about 12 years old. So you yeah. played the drums what? Like played it for two, two years. years. Yeah, started when I was 10. My mom put me in drum lessons and everything. And, That's what I did too. And I started started building guitars and I finally built one that I really liked. And then started so playing. That it. was it. <laughs> it, was, it was all over there after that, you know, and started yeah. playing and, and I really enjoyed it and got into it in school and everything. Of course, we had great music programs up there. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm from New York, and it was the same thing. Yeah, great music programs. Yeah. You know, and you could, you could, we had a folk rock band. You had 20th century music. You had all the different bands. The big and, band music and yeah. everything. When it, I know I played the trumpet for a little while, too. Oh, right on. You know, it's then I went good. to the drums, and then I eventually went to the guitar. The guitar I just picked up naturally. Yes. Because I already had music in me, so it was easy just to find the chords. Right on. Once right I knew on. a bar chord, I was in there. <laughs> yeah, Black Sabbath, you're That's good it. to go. Not even the full <laughs> bar chord, just two finger ones. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, so. Uh, yeah, you get in and you just start playing, and I played with a lot of bands in Baltimore, uh, Essex, uh, Fells Point area in Baltimore. And uh, actually was in a band I had really, really long hair for a while, uh, about down to my knees. So they actually named the band Cousin It. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's what some people call me. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you start playing, it's all hair and a guitar neck sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was funny. And got in a good original band called Buster Cherry for a long time. And how and did that do? That was fantastic. That was fantastic. Did you record a CD or anything? All original. Like now, we got to that point and everything fell apart. That's what happened with me. That's how it always In New York. Yeah. We got the record company to come in. They yes. said they wanted to hear a CD. Yes. We went home to make one. And it all falls and apart. And it all fell apart. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now my drummer moved to Pennsylvania. You know, the, the bass player, he just uh, he got sick of playing all of a sudden, yeah. right, right when we're getting ready to make it, you know. Similar yeah. to me, uh, the singer, he was getting divorced, and he was too involved with lawyers and everything. And right. So he had to leave, and... Uh, I just, I, after that, I built a recording studio. That's the way to do it, because then you have the musicians coming to you. Yeah. Absolutely. And if they don't come, you, we already know how to play the drums. That's right. <laughs> and we you just, just play it all ourselves. That's right. Play it all yourselves and like record it. Like that song, it. Guitar Mountain, that was on. I just played all the instruments on. I had done myself. Right. Nice. Nice. So. Yeah. And I, I did the same thing. You know, I, I recorded a demo that uh, I called eight, eight Tracks of Insanity. Because it's it's every track is eight eight songs, but every one of them is a completely different genre of music. Oh you know, really? Like a I mellow, hear this. mellow <laughs> jazz song. You know, I have my techno song, my heavy metal song. All within one song. All within no, within one CD. Oh, and, oh, on it like eight tracks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, and, and one of them well, I got named that because I did eight tracks of a guitar on one song. I just kept layering guitar on top of a guitar, and yeah. that's on my Reverb Nation, you know, Patrick McMichael. Ah, 
I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, yeah let everybody know where your Reverb Nation is so yeah. they can find it. I have one too. It's I don't know how you really find it. But <laughs> <laughs> just go into GST. Yeah, it. it's easy. You know, I don't even know my password anymore. It just automatically computer remembers it. Yeah, I just keep mine on my Facebook all the time. So when it gets too far down, I reshare it back up to the top. So yeah, there you <laughs> if go. I want to get onto Reverb Nation, I click there. Yeah, you have to keep promoting yourself, you know. Yes, because we're promoters of ourselves because we're musicians and yes. the only way to get anywhere is by promoting yeah you know, yeah self-promotion yeah. been lucky enough to i moved down here uh when i was 28 okay. so i was pretty young you know and and uh you know met all the great musicians down here you know yeah uh the who was i guys of course that's that's what wasn't their band back then but you know but and, they were here yeah right? even you know all the good good bands uh you know, Doug Gibson and yeah, and, and all these people, you know. You know very, more people than me. I've only good, been here you know, about seven years. Yeah. So. Chris I'm, Long's a good guy. Yeah, I've met him. Yeah, I know him very well. Great guy. Yeah, great promoter of other people Yeah, and everything. So I haven't really, I haven't started a band down here. I've played around with a lot of people and everything. Just, you know, busy working on guitars, building guitars. And, yeah, and I have some people in my studio. I do recording and... And uh, just haven't got the right, you know, chemistry yet with the right people. And it'll and, happen. Uh, it'll happen. I'm 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 trying not to push it anymore. You know. Yeah. I actually Let really them come enjoy, to you. Yeah, I actually really enjoy just going out and playing with everybody. Yeah. You know. Without, I get the same feeling. Even though I have my set band, I have to go jam with other people. Absolutely. Because I learn from everyone. Oh, absolutely. And they know? learn from me, and you know, it just goes around in a circle. That's right. Know? That's right. So that's. The thing to do, go up to all the open mics and just jam. That's right. Have a good time. You'll get better. Yep. Get up, play a song or two, and pass it on to the next person. Have a good time with it, you know. So See, It's supposed to be fun, too, you know. It's, yeah. It's, it's a business, but it's supposed to be fun as well. Just pick um, out a song that everybody might know and absolutely. jam on it. Absolutely. You know, we're, we need to bring back the rock bands, you know. Yes, rock you know, unity. Absolutely. We need that back. I'm not saying go chuck a bunch of TVs out of the hotel windows, but every right. once in a while might not yeah. be a bad thing. Just them know? old tube ones. We yeah, don't right. I don't even need those anymore. <laughs> we'll throw them out. <laughs> I just carry one around with me from, yeah. from hotel to hotel. I can drive down the street it out the window. in front of people's <laughs> front of their houses. I can load them up on my truck and that's throw right. them out the window across the street. That's right. That's right. The hotel will freak out. They'll think it's theirs. Yep. <laughs> But, so ever since you got down here, um, you started building guitars, mm -hmm. and uh, you jam around, and you never really had a full band from the time you had been here, when you were 27. That's, that's true. I kind of, I, I ruled out bands for a while just because of all the drama. Yes. You know, the, the it's dramas. Like being married to a whole bunch of guys. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. You hear all the problems yes. of the day. But now, you know, now I'm looking again, and I'm, I'm interested, and I have more time on my hands to do it. You and this know? is the place to play. Oh, you're I mean, not kidding. This is going to be great. You know, yeah. it's going to be a worldwide show with a great sound. Look at mm. these 78 Ludwig right. drum sets. This oh drum set God. is amazing. <laughs> People who yeah. come just to see that, it's like a brand new 78 drum set. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You wouldn't even think of things a day older than yesterday. I know. That was nice. I was lucky. Sounds to amazing play it. too. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Yes. So, you know, we'll be coming down here next week and playing live, and uh, I hope you come down and jam with us. Absolutely, yeah. I'll be here. We'll do some good and I'll jamming. I'll be playing your polka dotted guitar. Maybe lucky yep. enough to play that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring one of my other fifteen or twenty. All right, bring we'll them have, all down. We'll man. have them all lined up around here, you know. All right. Wednesday, eight, Wednesday 7 to 9. Wednesday, Wednesday 7 to 9 o'clock. It's going to be an open mic, but it's going to kind of be a set open mic with a band playing. And um, we'll be the first band to play. And we're going to play two sets, 45 minutes each, and have a break and a meet and greet in between and talk to everybody. And... Uh, We'll have some food and hamburgers, hot dogs, and stuff, and uh, 
it'll be a good homey feeling. Absolutely. And it'll be over like about nine o'clock. So if you still want to go out afterwards, yeah, it's early you enough go to right get down back to Lose Blues down the street. Right down the yeah. street, you can almost <laughs> walk there from yeah. here, you know. Or go to the beach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll bring yes, a pile you of guitars. Bring the kids too. Bring kids here. You're, they're allowed to come. Yeah. You yeah. know, bring all the young people because. Uh, we need the next generation of rock and roll music out there, pretty much. You're not kidding. Yeah. And the old people. And Don't the old people the could old come people. too. Don't forget the old rockers. <laughs> yep, the old rockers, which is all of us sooner or later. Yep. But we all die young. Yeah. Remember? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So uh, the next thing coming up after that, um, I think what I'm going to be doing is uh, recording in the recording studio upstairs. They have a fantastic recording studio here. Unbelievable. I'm, and Sean, uh, Sol Sean Wolf Salthouse, he's going to be the engineer. Nice. And he's going to be working on my CD. And uh, we'll have it out soon. Possibly I'll be using your guitars Absolutely. on the CD. Absolutely. So everybody will be able to hear what they really sound like in a recorded out atmosphere with professionals. This is a professional studio. This is a number Without one a doubt. studio. You are not kidding. They have everything here. Yes. I mean, you don't have to worry about a drum set here. There's like 10 of them. Yeah, I haven't walked past, walked 10 feet without running into one. Yeah. <laughs> So we got drums, we got guitars, we got every kind of amplifier you need. Um, a keyboard setup, beautiful keyboard setup. Nope. A 78 drum set behind us. We'll probably be using that live, so hopefully. And that's going to be fantastic. So. I'd be looking forward to that myself, yeah. just getting here to play with that yeah. drums kit. <laughs> it's got beautiful PA speakers, too. It's going to sound great. Yeah. And the upstairs is the actual recording studio where we there's a booth with a Roland uh, drum set, like, and a DW drum set, like nice. the top of the line. Right. And understand a you can even Stratocaster understand there's there. even bedrooms here. You can sleep here if you want. You can wanna... sleep here if you want to record. Yeah. Yeah. If you say you came from California and you wanted to come in for a week, there's rooms to stay in. Exactly. And the beach across and the, the street. Yeah, you're right on the beach. Come here, sleep here. And a jacuzzi. There's a jacuzzi oh. up there. I, I, yeah, there you go. This is I'll be in the jacuzzi the in about 20 minutes. out there. <laughs> hey. That's right. ISW. Best studio. Yeah. You can't beat it. TV, recording, producers. I can't That's even right. keep up with them all. It's like pages all over the place. That's right. Like them all. Everyone. Steve and I will be in the jacuzzi in 10 yep. minutes. Yep, we'll be up there. <laughs> Pre go over there and get one of them girls with the bikinis on to come right. out. Yeah. <laughs> Have her start warming it up for us. Yep. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Polka dot and bikini. Match that. Yeah, yeah. Match that. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned and watch the next video coming up. Today's show is brought to you by GS Teaser. Zen 4.0. Marion Music. And Open Mics.
Alexa, Video Candy's Music All-Stars. And now, here's your host, Steve Murray. You're up, Steve. How you doing? We're back. I'm back with Patrick McMichael, a custom guitar builder, and a guitar player, and a mm -hmm. drummer, and a multi-musician. He has a beautiful house. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That he showed us. There's many, many guitars in that place. So how many, many guitars, guitars do you have? Uh, I currently have 34 guitars. And each one of these guitars now, Everybody are... is custom made or customized by somebody, by something, you know. Yeah. I have uh, Bill Lawrence, uh, builds me a lot of pickups. Oh, and, uh, I know those pickups, they're really, yeah. really good. Very nice, they hand wire them for me when I want them. Wow. And uh, Lindy Fralin, he's a good friend as well. I know a lot of the, uh, the different pickup makers and, and people make custom pick guards for me. Yeah. And things I like to, to get these independent people that do things by their hands like I do, yeah, and and promote their thing as and well. That's the you quality know? work anyway. Absolutely, and they all the sound handmade quality work. Yes, is what we want. And they all sound fantastic, and uh, you know different things. I've got jazz guitars, my twelve strings. You have a jazz yeah. guitar. You know, yeah, those big thick yeah, hollow body. big thick like hollow a body. Or yeah, a guitar. Yeah. It was a Bester. It was a, it was a company that was uh, building custom guitars in California yeah. for about two or three years, and a friend of mine was roadie in for Kiss, and he he offered to uh, pick me up one, and when they were coming back to the East Coast, so he got it, brought it back to me. It's a beautiful guitar. Wow. Um, all these guitars you can see on my Facebook page. You know Patrick McMichael. Check him out uh, on Patrick McMichael's page, Facebook uh, page him. Yep. And I have my, you know, Pat Mix custom guitar and design page as well, which I try to put, you know, guitar pick of the day up. Wow. So it gives, gives somebody to look at a nice guitar every day. Yep. And, you know, I've seen them every day, and uh, they're very cool. I've seen a picture of your house. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, the house is neat. It's amazing you got me out of it to come here. But, yeah, uh, I wouldn't leave that house you know, either. The, the, Les, the Les Paul shape pool everyone knows about, you know. And well, everybody beautiful. out there doesn't know about it. Oh. He has a Les well, yeah. Paul shaped pool right. that I've been dying to get in. It's just been a little cool. I was supposed to go there That's Sunday, right. but it was raining and everything. But I'm going to get over there probably within this week. And... You got to see this pool. I mean, uh, it, it's unbelievable. Tell it's us about the nice inlays. Place to be. <laughs> yeah, we have the uh, you know stairway to heaven inlaid in the floor, and the first and, four uh, bars of stairway to heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> inlaid you know, in the floor. And, uh, got a nice custom bar built by Aaron Dietz that that he donated to the to the house. Oh, you I know? got to see that. That's a beautiful piece of wood. You know, a nice big cherry top on it. Wow. And everything, you know, we got pool tables, dart boards, you know, everything you can want in the house to never have to leave. You know? That's the way I like my house. And a nice guitars all over. Yeah, <laughs> a beach ball, volleyball area, beach volleyball area out back. Yeah. You know, my daughter wanted the beach at the house, so we brought the beach home. And uh, That's the best way to do it. Nice place to be, and we're going to get you over there, do some video shoots. Yeah, we're going to do videos. Of my uh, original music, I'm going to start doing some videos for them, and uh, we'll probably be doing a lot at his house because where else would be better than that? <laughs> right, <laughs> a West Paul pool. It's a great place to be. You know, yeah. great neighborhood, great neighbors. Uh, you know, we have a great time over there. You know, we'll make a big barbecue out of it. That's right, and we'll there invite we the whole world to come. <laughs> That's right. You know, everybody in we'll Italy. We'll have all of you here. Now, ha um, some of the people that you have played with when you've been playing around here. Oh, um, I think I've played with everybody around here once or twice, you know. So, um, Troy is a good friend of mine. All the Who Was I guys, Stowie, yep, Darren. Stowie, Darren. Um, Darren's sang for me Steve on Harvey. some of my stuff. Aaron's played drums for me on some of my stuff. Uh, Steve has come over. Steve's a great guy. Uh, oh, yeah, Steve Harvey. Yeah. He's a great guitar player. Yep. 
got to sit in one time with Jack Starr for a minute and a half or so, you know, and at the so end of the I. song. That was Down fantastic. Blues, blues. Jack Starr, uh, I know, from Long Island, yes. and I've been jamming with him for a uh, few times around here. Yeah, that was kind of a dream come true, because I've been following him since the 80s, you know. Oh, you were? All the old metal stuff, yeah. I've, he used I've, to have a cable TV up on Long Island, where I lived, and uh, right. we used to watch in nice. the 80s, you know. Yeah, yeah. He used to give us little guitar lessons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. It was great to get up and play with him. That was, that was Me too. stunning, you know. Um, most people I know, you know, Chris, you know, Chris. Rivas and uh, oh, Chris Rivas. Yeah. He's he's good and uh, you know, Dave Zen. Hersey, a singer. Yeah. Yeah. He's um, he was in that le- uh, not the last video, the video before. He was one of the singers and Chris Rivas was there playing the acoustic guitar. Yeah, and it was Jim Griffin on vocals. Yep, yep. So when we we play out our regular gigs, a lot of these guys show up and they know what we're playing, so they could come up on stage and play. Yep. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's just that easy. They've seen yeah. us so many times, so they got our repertoire down, so they nice. just jump up. Well, I know that one. Come on up. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> Come on up and get involved. Absolutely. Pretty soon we'll have a band back here playing in between. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, Zen 4.0, I think they're going to be here Great soon. Great band. Great I love band. those guys. Great band. Uh, a good friend of mine, Steve Rook, he plays acoustic. He has an acoustic set that he does now out. That's that's fantastic. He's a great player. Um, and what about this so much uh, fun. Kenny D's? Um. Yeah, Kenny D's. Even even uh, my good friend Bruce Marion is doing an open jam there on Sunday nights. Well, I'm gonna have and to that's get fantastic because that's even all ages. So um, some of the younger kids that are playing, they can't get into clubs. Yeah. Can come out and play and get up there and do their and thing. And that's the problem these days because uh, when we were younger, we were able to get in. We weren't right. drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all was, kinds I of, think it was only like 18. Oh, you can all drink. kinds of fake IDs going on back yeah. then. <laughs> Or you just show up before the bouncer got there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I used to show up and just meet the guitar player. But we were already player. going in there to play music. Yeah. We weren't going in to get drunk or something. Yeah, so right, exactly. Get the experience. Get the experience of the other yeah. bands playing and seeing what was going on, you know, growing up. And that's Absolutely. what these young kids got to do, too. They got to see us play, yeah. and then it'll mold them. Yeah. You have to somebody. be creative, you know. I used to show up early and wait for the guitar player to show up with all his guitars and carry a couple guitars there. Yeah, that's And then the, once the you were in, you were in, <laughs> you know. Oh, I hope that was fantastic. <laughs> that's right. I'll be standing backstage, I'll tune your guitar for you, mm-hmm. you know. And, and now and you're... Then uh, you're in there all night long and you get the experience. And and I had some great bands, uh, Child's Play, when I was growing up, would let me get on stage and play a song. I had a Judas wow. Priest song when I was 14 and 15. and. And uh, my good f- friend Brian Jacobino passed away last year, unfortunately. Oh. But he used to let me come to any club. If I showed up early enough, I could carry his guitars in. And then they would let that's me... That's the way to get in. They would let me play a song. Remember that, kids carry a guitar. That's right. <laughs> come and help the guitar players out and the drummers. The drummers need a lot of help. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Especially the double bass ones. That's right. Get in there and carry some drums in and set that stuff up for them and you'll be... In you'll be right get, in there, and you'll be able to hang out with the band, and, and they yeah. might let you play. That's Who right. Knows? Once you get up you're and play there, a song. As long as you're in there for music, nobody's going to bother you. Exactly. So, And that's the way it worked out for me, too, because I would see bands like Zebra and Twisted Sister, and when, before they made it, they were playing in the bars in my neighborhood. Well, so I yeah. knew Dee Snyder, I know that Randy Jackson, I know yeah. all those guys. Because in the early 80s, that's when they started to make it and got their own record deals. But I seen them go through the 70s, and they let me come and see them and sit right in front and watch what they were doing. Yeah. And I'd go home as fast yeah. as I could Couldn't and emulate it. Exactly. What did he play on that guitar solo? Fantastic. Same thing. That's the best way to do it. You know? Yeah. That's the way you get it right, too. You yeah. Know? You Seeing somebody else do it. Exactly. Right? Close up. Yes, and yes. I'd always be right in front of the stage. Especially for Randy Jackson of uh, Zebra. Zebra, he yeah. He was playing Fantastic Led Zeppelin songs. Fantastic stuff. Amazing and band. voice and uh, the band was yeah. just so good, I mean. That was one amazing band. And they had a few albums out in the early 80s. He probably still is making albums. And uh, hopefully we might have him on the show one day. Since yeah. I do know him from Long Island, we might be able to get him on Skype. 
Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I'd and like to be here for that one. Yeah. Absolutely. And maybe Dee Snyder, too, because I know him. There you go. That would be a riot. Johnny Bolin uh, is in Black Oak, Arkansas. He's Tommy Bolin's brother. And I might be able to get him on because I played at two Tommy Bolin music festivals in 2010 and 11. And uh, we stay in touch all the time. And we might be able to get him on Skype too. You know, he's a really great drummer with a great band. It's been out since the 70s. Right, you know? exactly. Jim saw... Danny is still going, man. <coughs> man. I mean, he's doing well. I you saw know. the Tommy Bowling shows on YouTube, they're fantastic. Yeah, but Good you work. saw it with my band. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. We did a Good lot of work, work before Good we work. got him. For songs that people barely knew, we resurrected this guy and made him, you know, into somebody that he should have been, but he died too young. He was yeah, only absolutely. 25. You I know. know. 25 to 27. Boy, we lost them all around that yep. time, didn't we? And he was mm. in James Gang. He replaced uh, Joe Walsh in James Gang, James Gang Bang in Miami, and then he went into Deep Purple. Yeah. Uh, Come that. Taste a Band after Richie Blackmore quit. Mm -hmm. He made two solo albums, and somewhere in there something happened, and he passed away. and Lost a lot of them too early. Yeah. Too early. But he was on the verge of making it, you know, the full-blown uh, rock star, and he just was taken away so quick. So mm -hmm. he didn't get the recognition that like Jimi Hendrix and the other guys did because he was just there and gone. Right. Jimmy was popular. Right, right, right. Tommy was joining bands and filling in for it. He was probably the first one to be a best replacement guitar player. Absolutely, because he could play and sing. Anything. You know, he could play anything and he could sing. And he had every style yeah. of music, and yeah. that's why I was drawn to him, because he didn't just play the hard rock and the heavy right. metal. He had songs like Savannah Woman. Yeah, and yeah. like Exactly. Kind of like Santana type of songs. All the different styles he touched on and moved on to the next day. Yep. So listen to Tommy Bolin, everybody. Yeah, I love there. Tommy Bolin. You know, he's, you know, somebody that all kids should listen to. If you're going to be an upcoming guitar player, you're going to have to go through Tommy Bolin. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. <laughs> so just it's like do it now. He's Tommy all Bolin. over YouTube. Yeah. Tommy Bolin, Rory Gallagher. Him too, Rory some, Gallagher. Some of the ones that you don't hear about as much. Yeah, and they, and they what's his name, uh, Alvin... Alvin Lee. Lee, yeah. Unbelievable. Fantastic and I can't believe player. he died, you know, like a week ago. Mm -hmm. Very sad, very, very sad. Very sad. And Jack Starr even dedicated his show to Alvin Lee. Alvin Lee, night. yeah. And I was talking to my friend uh, Jeff Young from Megadeth the night that he was playing that show, and Jeff Young promoted it on the West Coast wow. in, in California. You know, wow. Telling everybody in, in L.A. to go out to come to Florida and see Jack Starr, you know. He was going to dedicate his show to Alvin Lee. Yeah, he put a big thing on uh, Facebook about it, too. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for, you know, Alvin Lee. What can you say? What can you say? Look at Woodstock. Yeah. Right. I'm going home. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I think he taught it. Ted Nugent everything he knows. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ted Nugent stole his whole repertoire there. Yep. Right after that, I've seen Ted Nugent many times in the 70s with his bow and arrows. But he's a great yeah. guitar player. Oh, I fantastic. I always have to give that to him. He is a madman. And he didn't stick with the traditional Stratocasters. He was playing these big yeah, Gibson hollow the bodies big with giant Fender bird amps. Land. <laughs> yeah, big bird land with Fender amps. Who yeah, would have thought of that? Like the com totally his style. And he got it to sound good. He'd pick yes. out uh, feedback spots and exit out on the floor. He says, got a feedback right here because the, yeah, the holes, the in, holes there. in there. Yeah. That was some <laughs> great stuff. Yeah. Great stuff. And you could... Okay, we'll be right back after this. Uh, we have one more video to show. Don't miss it. Um, we'll see you in a few minutes. Rock on. <laughs>
Thank everybody for watching today's show. And like to thank our sponsors. And now, here's your host. Steve Murray. How you doing? You're up, buddy. We're back. All right. Patrick so, McMichael, yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What a great show this uh, is. I'm glad to have you, to have these great guitars on uh, the stage here. I mean, uh, I played them. I know they're unbelievable. Thank you. Thank I you. Can't wait to play one out of uh, an amp with a full band. Yeah. That's when the real tone is going to come out. That's right. That's when, the, that's when the real magic happens. And I mean, just playing a guitar without an amp and you got the acoustical sound, that tells you that guitar is going to be great out of an amplifier. Yeah, Absolutely. Like I go through several different um, ways that I do it, several theories, but I can go through four or five different necks on a guitar before I find the one that marries. With that body. With that the body, because the neck and the body have to marry together. Those woods have to, to get resonate. The, together. Absolutely. And get the right action and the, the low right action. action the right action and just where you're strumming the guitar and you can feel the vibration against your body. And uh, so... So it's a process. And that's what I always look for, too. I think I kind of go into a zone when the guitar is on my body at the right way where I feel the what I'm playing coming right, right through my body. Yes. So you don't and even it, have to hear it. It yeah. doesn't have to be loud but or then anything. Then my body just takes over. My guitar, my fingers just take yep. over. Yep. Go into autopilot. Autopilot. <laughs> there right. you go. Some people call it, Steve, right. we got to get you in that zone, that zone. All right, yeah. well, I'm going to put the guitar right. like this, all right, yeah, okay, yeah. and then I get to that spot and yeah. that feeling. And it's not so much the amp, it's just the vibrations coming through my body. Absolutely, and when you become one with that guitar. Yes. You know, that's that's when that the magic kids, really too. happens. Become one with your instrument. That's you right. Know? You don't need 50 million guitars and all that. If you get one good one, that makes you happy, just stick with that until you get good and then move on to something better because then yes. you'll know like the little things that you don't like about your little $200 guitar. That's right. And that's then right. that's the way I felt about it because I had a mm -hmm. fake uh, Gibson Les Paul. It was a Carlo Rebelli made by Sam Ash in the right, early right. 70s. Yeah, yeah. And it had the bolt-on neck. Mm -hmm. 
it sounded great. It did everything it was supposed to do, but it just kind of wore out faster. Right. Than right. Um, you know, like a, a no, real no, Les, no, Paul Les Paul would. would last forever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like the parts on it. But I, you know, I also worked part time at Marion Music. Um, you know, in Palm Bay and Stack Boulevard oh, you did? down there. And, uh, you know, me and Bruce have had a long relationship with each other. I've known him since I've been here. And um, he's a great guy. So, you know, I do guitar work out of that store as well. And, and we have the kids come in, you know, and try to, you know, Encourage get their, get their first guitar and everything. And I enjoy that so much. Yeah. You know, getting a youngster in that he just wants to start learning. And that really, is fantastic. One, he's just got to learn a G chord and a D, and yep. then, you know, then and you're off and running. You're off. <laughs> That's right. Three chords, and you can play 20 songs. Exactly. You know, and the kids come in for lessons and, and things, and, and it's enjoyable to be at that end of the spectrum as well to see the little kids and help them along. Yeah, that's what I up, like to do, you know? too. I like to help the younger kids yeah. along. Anybody that's interested, I in my living room, I have a drum set, and I have bass amps and guitars mm -hmm. and guitar amps. Any kid in the neighborhood that wants to come over and play, I'm right there helping them. Absolutely. And I've been doing that since I got here, you know, like seven years ago. Right. I don't even use my house as my house. It's, right. Uh, the <laughs> living room is where we play. Right. I have the bedroom and I have the back bedroom that's a TV in, and the third bedroom's my computer. Right. right. With one chair. Right. <laughs> so one chair. <laughs> one chair. So, so I can watch TV. Right. When I'm eating my dinner on the TV table. That's right. But nice. it's really a community house for yeah. musicians. And everybody can come and play and, and do play. their thing at whatever level they are. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the thing about some of the... Because everybody's you know, got something. Yeah, everybody has something to bring to the to table. To offer. Absolutely. Maybe, you know, whatever level they are, they might know something that you never would think of. Yeah, absolutely. Or they came across something that absolutely. nobody else thought of. Never stop a player. You could always learn, learning and learning. Being a musician is learning constantly, so... Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with learning. I mean, I'm doing it every day. That's right. I'm Anybody learning right of that? now how to try to keep this in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah, I, I play with anybody of any level. I, I don't shy away from anybody or, or criticize anyone Me about either. whatever level they're at. I mean, just play and have fun and uh, try to learn something along the way and keep getting better. You know, yeah, with, with your uh, own thing. You don't have to have somebody else's style or somebody else's thing. Have your own thing. Have your own. Have your own style. Uh, the bands from, you know, in the 70s, you know, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and Absolutely. Jethro Tull and Alice Cooper and all that, they all sounded different. Yes. They were being themselves. Yep. Yes, yeah, sir. And that's what it was. Now, today, a lot of it, you know, has got molded through a computer sound, and they kind of made everything sound the same. That's true. So we like to, like when you record, guys, you know, just try to get a live band sound. Right, exactly. And then do your overdubs. Exactly. You know, don't uh, overtrack everything and make it yeah. sterile. You Ex know. Yeah, don't take the life you know, out of gotta it. It's got to be a live band. Don't, do not take the life out of it. Leave the life in it. And that comes with a lot, a lot of practice with other guys. And you might you know, break up and get another guy and break up and get another guy. It doesn't matter. That's the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Until you get to And you learn level. from each one of them as well. You know, you have a, a, somebody that comes in, and even if you, you don't jive, you end up learning something from them. You yes. Know, taking something with you, and they take something with from them. You, yeah. You know. Because it's a constant learning process. Yep. There's nothing that was the worst thing they ever did was take music out of schools. Absolutely. Because it kept the kids Absolutely. learning. Yes. And it, and it was fun learning. Yes, and interacting with each other, you know, trying to get along yeah. with, you know, the the other kid that you never thought you would get along, and you get together and play music, and then all of a sudden you're friends yeah. forever, you know? Yeah. That. Okay, we're going to wrap it up, and um, thanks for coming to the first Livio's Candies show. Livio's Candies. All, all stars. We're going to be having more people come on soon. Uh, on Skype. I'm going to have more interviews with different musicians around here, and I hope to see you again next week. Thank you, Patrick Thank you. McMichael, for coming. Thank you for having me.
Great right. time. Well, I hope you come back again soon. Let's go hit the hot tub. Let's get to that hot tub. The girls are waiting. We're gonna <laughs> we have to go. We have to change this into something else. <laughs>